guys are in Freeman. Look at what we have. We have now 52 subscribers to our channel. We have surpassed the 50 sub limit. And that is super amazing. And guess what guys? I got three new markers. Red, orange, and violet, or purple, for our educational videos and for any type of content that I'm making. So we thank you guys for the support, okay? So let's look at this episode. Let's get straight into what I mean. So as soon as I have seen from the title, I want to talk about the best approach. The best. And why is this the best? Regardless of any tuition or other approaches that you may have, let me tell you guys why. Let me tell you guys not to leave you in suspense. Let me tell you guys the approach first, okay? I don't want you to leave you in suspense. Number one is to go fast and complete. Okay, this is like first time I'm using orange, so I'm so surprised by the color. Go fast and complete what you know. And what I mean by that? If you know like the easy questions during the maths exam, complete them first. And what do you do with the hard ones, okay? What do you do with the difficult ones? Let's say the tough ones, right? Oh, there's a lot of synonyms that I use. Tough ones, you leave it to the end. I guess this is super cliche, but promise me that you will watch this video till the end because I'm going to talk about two things. Why this approach works only for A-level maths and not any other science or any other human subject. You need to understand that and not just follow this approach blindly. And this is why it's called the best and most narrow math approach, okay? Number two, I have a lot of tips on how you can prioritize time during the exam. Which topics should you spend more time on? Which topics should you spend less time on during the exams so you maximize your marks, okay? So tough exams, tough questions. I mean, leave it to the end. What do you do next? We are done, leave it to the end, we have done all the questions, do the tough ones. Now you're probably wondering like by the time you finish this, a lot of you guys may have time management problems. Okay, maybe math, you're probably struggling with math. So do tough ones the last, okay? And I'll talk about which are the tough topics later on in the video. And what's number three then? Number three is check. But I want to make a clear distinction, okay? If you guys are running out of time, okay, if you guys are running out of time while you're doing the second step, you're like about like say 10 to 15-ish minutes, what I would recommend is skip to step 3. Look through the questions that you have done and make sure that you answered them correctly. Don't care about the tough ones because I believe, right, it's not only tough for you, it's tough for almost the entire cohort. So just run out of time, go to check. Okay, so let me come right in front of the camera and talk about why this approach works and a lot of tips, okay? So guys, let me talk about two things face-to-face -face with you guys. Why does this approach only work for math and not other sciences or other humanities subjects? So, first point, there are two papers for math. You guys know that, right? Each paper is 100 marks, so there's a total of 200 marks. And what makes math unique is it's how many marks you can lose to still maintain the A. 200 mark paper for math. If you will look at chemistry or physics, it's somewhere around 110, 120, correct? So, so to maintain the A for math, how many marks should you get out of 200? 140, right? That's 70%. So you can lose up to 60 marks, correct? You can lose up to 60 marks in terms of the tough, tough questions right here, correct? And you still get that A. That's the first point I want to drive. And number two, guys, not only paper one and paper two is the division, there is statistical math and there's pure math, correct? And pure math takes 140 marks and statistical math takes 60 marks. So I know a lot of you guys have heard about this, but the point I'm driving is you need to revise both. And not only that, your focus should be more on the pure math. The difference between pure math and statistical math is that the pure math, correct? Will set the base for you to get like your C or your B minimum grade. But to push you to that A, you need that statistics. What do I mean? Okay, let me try to explain. 140 marks of pure math. Say you score about 100 marks, so you've lost 40 marks. The maximum amount of marks you can lose for statistics is 20. You need both, okay? But your focus should be on pure math and more than statistical math, okay? First point. Now, second point I want you guys to really understand. Now, how is math completely different from the other subjects? Highest time available per mark. You guys calculate it out. 180 minutes, 100 marks. That's 1.8 marks per minute. If you look at chemistry, physics, etc. 
somewhere around 1.6, 1.7, it's a bit more fast paced. For math, time management is not that big of a problem as compared to applying over the concepts, correct? So this approach would work because you have a lot of time, whereas for sciences, it's more about speed, okay? So let me get into the second part, is which topics, how do you prioritize time during the exam, okay? So let's go back there. Right, so now I have a whole list of topics that's tested for A-level mathematics. And it's split by pure math and statistical math with this division, okay? This photo is actually in the description, okay? I'm going to use this abbreviation as ML, okay? Short, medium, and long. This is the amount of time you're supposed to spend. So, this entire thing is quite subjective, but generally from me practicing my exams and doing practice papers, this was how I spend my time, okay? So let's do topic by topic. So this one, S. It's a quite easy topic. Now, these three topics are where, I don't just want to classify everything as L. These are the three topics, I recommend that you do it closer to the end of the exam, number one. Or you take a because it takes a lot of time. If you make one small mistake, it's gonna screw up the entire question. For example, domains, you screw up because you never look at a certain value. Complex numbers, you confuse the i with the one. You agree, right? Vectors, change one number, the entire thing is out. There's no carry, error carry forward at all. Okay? And that's examiners and policy. Now, so do this the last. EPGP. EPGP. Definitely a bit medium, I would say, but questions are becoming easy because it's mostly uh, formula based. Most of the, the entire math, right, in fact, is real, so formula based, you notice. The focus is not on the content, but it's the application. And that's how it actually differs from the sciences, okay? Formula based, S. Now, differentiation application. This is why I want to put that first M. Now, why? Differentiation is kind of easy, but the application part, concerns real-life applications. Like they give you this cone, water is dripping out. On one hand, they ask you to prove an equation, correct? So with this topic, right, it's split like this. They first ask you to prove, then they ask you to, you know, do the other calculations, like find a maxima or a minima. So I personally recommend leave this to the last. Leave the proving to the last, it's a waste of time. Focus on the max or min, just apply over the equation that they already give you and ask you to show, okay? This is just an approach quite specific for this topic. Now, McLaurin series, I would say definitely S. You need to be careful a bit because you may make a bit of careless mistakes, but it shouldn't be a big problem. This one confirm S. A transformation, they just drawing your f' x and one of fx. These are something that I just practice and practice and it's Relatively easy for most of you guys, okay? Just relatively easy. Integration and application. Now, this one is M because this you need to be very careful, especially when you're calculating the area. They, get, they need to chop the graph a lot, right? Like many, many chops. You need to minus this area plus this area. You need to be very careful with the calculations, which is the good and bad math. Differential equations, definitely put it at M. Definitely, it's a pretty challenging topic and it's the same, actually it's the same as this. They'll ask you to prove an equation and then they determine the max or minimum or calculate it out exact same approach as this one, okay? Now, statistical math, it's also important, right? Number one, let me start with the first two topics. No, like these two topics take too much time. These two topics, don't ever do them first. Leave these two topics to and can't emphasize the importance of this, it's such a waste of time. It's so hard to earn marks, okay? Now, let's classify the rest. Binomial is somewhere in the middle, and this is the only middle one. All the others here are S. All these are all S. They are all S. They are very simple. Correlation, regression, easy. Hypothetic, one formula, formula based on GCGC. This entire step two maths. It's so much GC work other than these two topics. And I think it's just GC, GC, GC. Wrapping up with them. So, yes, this entire thing is in the description. And I hope you guys understand why and how to apply this approach. 
try practicing it out, I believe it will help you guys do well for your A-level mathematics. So do subscribe, turn on the notification bell, share this video with all your friends who need help with math, okay? So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.